Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'd like to just do a quick video about ultrasound in sepsis. So lactic acidosis in sepsis, as you're learning, is classically thought to be due to tissue hypoperfusion leading to anaerobic glycolysis. But we now know that it may actually be more a result of increased aerobic glycolysis due to increased release of epinephrine. The body produces more epinephrine as a stress response, which, which stimulates the beta-2 receptors, and this leads to unregulated glycolysis, producing more pyruvate. The excess pyruvate is then turned into lactate. This may actually be a beneficial compensatory response in times of stress, as the brain and heart can use lactate as a metabolic fuel. So let's talk about point-of-care ultrasound, POCUS, in sepsis. Sepsis affects cardiac function, and we can use ultrasound to quickly identify some of these changes. Here we see a normal heart in the parasternal long view. It has a normal rate. The mitral valve opens and slaps the septum, so a good uh, left ventricular ejection fraction. And you can see the ventricles contract during systole, but the left ventricular walls don't touch. In contrast, here we see the heart in a septic patient. So in sepsis, increased levels of epinephrine and lactate lead to tachycardia and possibly also improved cardiac function. But depletion of vasopressin stores likely contributes to systemic vasodilation, which results in the distributive shock, which is classic for sepsis. Here we see a tachycardic hyperdynamic heart the heart is trying to compensate for the hypotension caused by vasodilation by pumping as much blood as possible. On ultrasound, we see the inner walls of the left ventricle touch during systole. Hyperdynamic LV function during initial evaluation is actually an independent predictor of sepsis. The IVC is another good place to look for signs of sepsis or septic shock. We image the IVC in long axis, so you see the transducer here with the indicator pointed toward the patient's head, and you should see the hepatic vein draining into the IVC and the IVC dumping into the right atrium. This is a normal IVC. The width varies somewhat with respiration, but the vessel generally collapses less than 50%. In contrast, here we see a collapsing IVC. So systemic vasodilation means less blood in the IVC, so it appears flat and collapses more than 50% with respiration, or completely in this image. This is often seen in the hypotensive patient with septic shock. So to summarize, as a compensatory stress response in sepsis, the body produces increasing levels of epinephrine and lactic acid. Tachycardia and vasodilation occur in sepsis and septic or distributive shock. Point of care ultrasound findings in sepsis include hyperdynamic heart where the LV walls touch in systole and a collapsing IVC where the IVC is flat or collapses more than 50% with respiration. To learn more, please check out www.sonostuff.com or www.ucdultrasound.com. Check out Mike Schick's YouTube channel and follow us at the Center for Ultrasound Excellence on Facebook and Ultrasound Stuff on Twitter. Thanks for listening.